Well, national inquiries are, are a, a good tool for national human rights institutions. They're a way of addressing quite large-scale systemic issues of human rights violations. So with regards to torture, if you undertook a national inquiry investigating allegations of torture within a detention regime within your own state, it can bring the attention to the parliament, to the government and to the general population about what the issues are and where human rights violations are actually occurring. So for example, um, in 2005 the Mongolian National Human Rights Commission undertook a national inquiry into allegations of torture within their detention related systems. And the outcome of this process was a report that was presented to the Parliament and the Parliament discussed the report and the recommendations for a full two days of parliamentary sessions and as a result so quite fundamental changes occurred to the operation of detention centres in Mongolia. All members of Parliament were very surprised what this torture why it's high levels, who is the, the used torturers, who is died, who is the victim of torture. He asked everything. I was happy. I was happy. Because I think that I'm um, finally maybe an all member of parliament understanding these issues. Maybe a little bit change the law change the situation, maybe provide it financial support, you know, it goes result. Legislation framework is changed and also public awareness. We asked what do you think torture is? And they say oh, I was been in fifty years ago. Now not use the torture. Therefore, we prepared it to um, documentation uh, program for the public awareness. Now change it in all uh, people's mission. Yeah, because it's now uh, is lots of compliant sent into um, commission. This is changed. Change it then 2005. Now changed. The immigration detention regime in Australia at that time was a very bleak one. Uh, there had been a surge in the numbers of uh, people arriving by boat in Australia. Uh, the, the then government had reacted very strongly to, to that. In doing so, I think compassion went out the window, frankly. Kids were kept in detention in pretty appalling conditions. Well, everyone was kept in detention in pretty appalling conditions and there was no end in sight. There was no, there was no defined period of time that people were going to be in detention and that caused great feelings of hopelessness uh, and uh, frankly caused some serious impacts on people's mental health. You know, one story which comes to mind uh, which we heard of during the inquiry was an 11 year old boy who within the period of a month or two climbed into the razor wire two or three times and went on hunger strike on a number of occasions. Now, the key recommendation from the inquiry was that children should not be in immigration detention. We, we also um, made a number of other recommendations to uh, require government to um, comply with its international obligations under the Convention on the Rights of the Child uh, and, and, and several of the other uh, UN conventions to which Australia is a signatory. And um, pleasingly, um, as a result of the inquiry and as a result of um, a deal of community pressure from refugee organisations, because we certainly didn't do it on our own, um, children are no longer kept in immigration detention in Australia. You, you can bring a lot of pressure, when I say you, I mean the Commission and, and community groups can bring a lot of pressure on a government in Australia by um, ensuring that these issues are dealt with uh, in the media. And so one of the strategies of our inquiry, I suppose, was to uh, ensure that the issues received and continued to receive um, media coverage. It's quite an important factor uh, in the process of, of change.